Okay, a very good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, my name is Phil Stephanie and welcome to The Hyde Show. As usual, for the next half an hour, I'm looking forward to spending time with you and the animals we see on the cameras both on the live cameras here we've started at rosie just in time look at that little baby elephant moving off to the right <laughs> there's certainly been lots of elephant activity over the last couple of days as well as some predator activity around tembi i've got some great highlight videos which we'll also spend a fair amount of time on But as usual, folks, just a reminder, if you do have any questions, it's always really nice to, to hear from you. Just put the question in the box below the screen. If you haven't signed up onto the AfriCam site, you'll need to do so to, to get in touch and write any questions. Always nice to see if I have the answer for you. <laughs> so it looks like those elephants have actually heard us coming as usual it's not an unusual thing <laughs> for the animals to do it seems like they know we're on our way so that's fine I'd like to go straight into some of the highlight videos we'll keep an eye as usual on to you know on the on the live cameras there's been lots of activity but in the meantime let's have a look at some of the things that have been happening over the last couple of days some of the things we might have missed as they often happen at night although yeah this first clip is of a lioness that has been spending quite a bit of time around Tembi. we'll get it across onto the screen shortly but there seems to be a lioness who's been calling been spending quite a bit of time on her own. I think she's looking for a pride. There she is. Beautiful lioness strolling through at Tembi. It's quite interesting to see how the prides and lions have spent more and more time as things are drying out. They tend to be spending more time around the water holes. It's not as green as it used to be. And slowly but surely, there seems to be a little bit more predator activity. I've got another great clip of some leopards mating again. Funny enough, on yesterday's show, we spoke about how unusual that was. And when I was looking through the highlights, there they were again. There's a second lioness in the pride. It looks like the whole pride has been around. Their stomachs are nice and full. Three or four days ago that lioness was calling for her pride members and i think they've been successful as we often see lots of nyalas impalas lots of food around tembi but these guys have got really full stomachs so let's hope they stick around it's really nice to see them it's obviously a highlight You can still hear the frogs in the background. That piece of water is still nice and, and full. That line is scent marking there. See how she scrapes the ground. It's quite clever, actually. They use their claws to soften the ground, get the nice, moist soil, so that when she scent marks in there, that scent lasts longer. It goes deeper into the ground. And so she's just making sure that everybody knows that they're back in the vicinity of Tembi Pan. At the moment it's just two two lionesses. And I suspect the rest of the pride is this one's brother and another lioness that we sometimes see. I reckon they're still on the kill. Not sure what they've killed this time, but it's definitely something worthwhile keeping your eye out for both day and night. A 
lovely to see these lions. There is another clip of some more predators, but there was also some interesting, unusual sighting happened at Naledi. I think it was yesterday. Those of you that are interested in birds, these are fascinating. These two, the ground hornbills. There we go. <laughs> they were up on the rim of the water. There's two of them. Nice to see them as well. Highly endangered species. They struggle to breed actually. So it's quite nice to be able to see them in areas where they're well protected like these. We get to see them relatively often. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to be a tortoise or a snake anywhere near these guys. They definitely look quite prehistoric. Coming in for a drink. It's quite interesting how they're choosing also to go for this nice fresh water. Look at that. So these are some of the more unusual sightings we get to see on these cameras. And again, has a lot to do with the fact that we don't disturb the animals. We're just sitting wherever we are around the world and having this wonderful eye into the wilderness. You can see that hornbill has actually got a ring on its foot. A lot of the hornbills in these areas are well researched, mainly to do with their breeding and where they nest. Like I say, they quite a rare bird in the greater scheme of things. But here are these two giving us a wonderful view. Sticking with the, the birding theme, there have been some interesting birds out. These were the ground hornbills. We'll get the next one across shortly. Wonderful view of a tawny eagle. There we go. Just look at that perfect view, amazing late afternoon sunlight. I'm not mistaken, it gets joined by a vulture shortly. There's been quite a lot of activity around Naledi Dam last week. I think the lions must have killed something big. There was some great interaction between lions and hyenas, vultures. But here, this tawny eagle is also right up there. when it comes to scavenging, such a beautiful raptor, but it does spend a lot of time scavenging. In fact, it's one of the indicator birds that if you see a tawny eagle, it's always a good idea to go and have a look around that area. Okay, I'd like to go across to Kwapan on the live cameras. We'll come back to some of the other highlights. There's some nice zebra activity as well as some kudus. Also want to take an opportunity to answer some of the questions. And say hi to Suki, Marcel. Hope you guys are well. Look at those zebras, beautiful zebras, lots of water lilies. A 
just reading your question here, Marcel, with regards to the vibrations uh, of lines roaring and whether you know, when they roar close to us, those of us that have managed to experience that, um, you can actually feel the vibration and, and your question and, and is do the lines feel that? I reckon if they're close enough, they will. Um, I'm not so sure from a distance away that they'll feel the vibration uh, in the same way as elephants would, for example. You know, elephants feeling vibrations through their feet. But there's no doubt that if they're right next to each other, I'm pretty sure that that sound penetrates pretty deeply. Suki, you're asking a question here on the ground hornbills and where do they nest? They actually nest up in the trees. And typically in, in big holes, either in dead tree trunks that have holes in them, or sometimes they take over maybe a, a owl's nest. And so they'll hide themselves up in the tree. So they spend most of their time on the ground, but they are pretty good flyers as well. Um, but they typically use flight just for cruising from one space to the next and then of course roosting they also roost up in the trees nice safe place to be Zebras having a very relaxing time here. Nice to see zebras. It seems that the kudu's moved off. Let's go across to Naledi Dam quickly. There's some interesting sighting there of another pretty common animal, but nice to see them. Let's see if they're still there. We'll get across to them. There's some impalas, or there were some impalas, right under the camera. It's always nice to get good views of the different animals. Mm, looks like they've moved off. Okay. We'll keep another eye on it to see what, what else comes later on in the afternoon. Let's have another look at a different clip. It's the same lioness though at Tembi. Let's see if we can get ourselves across there. No, that's okay. Not a problem. There's another really interesting clip, seeing as we've had Naledi. Let's see if we can get Max to send us across to an interesting little battle between a crested barbet and a squirrel. <laughs> Some wonderful colors here again. That's a, a beautiful bird called a crested barbet and just keep watching on the left of that stump a squirrel pops its head out and and that barbet is hoping to try and take over that nest they both actually nest or live in the same place <laughs> and in this case it looks like the squirrels got the best of the accommodation but I think that barbet's being quite patient. We've seen the barbet also trying to get its way into that hole when there were some green wood hoopoos. So lots of different animals talking about the ground hornbills also nesting in the trees, obviously in a much bigger hole. Right, there comes a squirrel. There's nesting material. You see that? <laughs> it's 
they've got a mouthful of leaves lining the nest. And the barber was really hoping to get in there. Maybe the barber thought that the squirrel was in there. But it's always interesting to see these two two sorts of interactions. Again, it's something we often miss when you're driving through the bush. And here we have a wonderful privilege of sitting back nice and relaxed and seeing how these animals get on with each other. So that squirrel, there it comes out again. <laughs> Wonder what he's saying to that barbet, what the conversation would be. It surprises me that the barbet doesn't go for, ah, that's why there's another squirrel inside. <laughs> Wonderful little scene here. Okay, well, while these two fight their way through, I want to go through some of the snapshots. I've got quite a few snapshots. There's been lots of activity on the camera lately. And I was talking about the two leopards. And here's a wonderful shot taken by Risky at Rosie's pan. Again, a bit of a heads up for those of you that have the time in the evening. It's not impossible that they, they're still there today. When leopards are mating or lions or any other predators for that matter, they, they cover very little ground. They have one main objective and that is to mate. And so they might come back again tonight because there were lots of wonderful snapshots taken of these incredible predators. So it's definitely something quite unusual, quite incredible to see. So keep a lookout for them tonight and maybe tomorrow night. Usually there's a main time of mating. It's usually 48 hours, sometimes a little more. But it's definitely worthwhile looking out for. So here's another shot by somebody else, Amy M. Got a nice portrait of one of the leopards. At Rosie's, as I said, they spent a fair amount of time there and just a beautiful opportunity to look at these incredible predators, but also to take the snapshots. Just take some moment to look at this animal, see the uh, spots, it's got full spots on its legs and then the rosettes on its body, and then that necklace around the neck, that very particular spot pattern. So if they do come back or we'll still spend a bit of time at the waterhole tonight, you'll be able to identify if it's the same one. It's a lovely shot there, Amy. Thanks very much. So here's another photograph, another lovely snapshot from Naledi of something different, something we actually don't often get to see. They're really quite quick. They are in front of the camera quite often, but to actually get to see them and get a nice opportunity like this, MTAC, you've got a great shot of these dwarf mongoose. The more common ones to see are the banded mongoose. But just look at these beautiful little guys. No stripes down their backs. The banded mongoose have stripes down their back. They are, I would say, maybe double the size. But these as individuals are also, relatively speaking, relative to body size, quite formidable little carnivores. Russell and I were debating whether we should put them in the predator category. I think they think they should be there. <laughs> but they'll scratch around 
for all sorts of things from spiders to scorpions, smaller snakes, although they'll take on some bigger snakes as a, as a group, wonderful little sounds. But in this case, they came down for a drink and they also spent a bit of time sunning themselves, giving great opportunity for wonderful snapshots. And there's another great shot taken on Olifants River this time by Magda. This time of water buck. As we've seen lately, and it's pretty clear that throughout all the areas where our cameras are, the rain seem to have slowed down. Rivers come down, it's not quite as green as it was. And now we see these wonderful sandbanks coming back. And here's a beautiful photograph of a male and female waterbuck, perfectly framed. Lovely shot. Susie Wilder's picture of. Uh, the water bucket up, let me answer your question and welcome you to the show. And thanks for your question. The question I think is, do leopards share territory with lions? Yes, they do. They, they all share the space. But one thing's for sure, though, is when leopard is moving through its territory and it picks up the scent or even the close calling or audio of lions, it will very typically move the other way, especially if that scent is fresh and they'll be able to work that out. They don't want to come into contact with the lions. The lions don't mind. They pretty much own the show as, I don't know if you caught yesterday's on point show on predators. Um, but we, we discussed the concept that lions right at the top of the log and he moves through his territory pretty freely. The leopard, on the other hand, is quite aware of all the other competitors in its area and essentially just gives them a wide berth. You know, if it moves up to a tree and there's a fresh scent of, of a lion that's just moved through, it'll often just turn around and go the other direction. Or if it hears the audio of a lion calling in front of it, it'll do the same thing. So they do share territory or share space but leopard will, will stay clear of lion. Let's take a look at one or two more snapshots and then we'll have a look and see what's happening on the live cams. But there were lots and lots of snapshots taken lately. Some beautiful, beautiful scenic shots here. Siko, here you go. Beautiful photograph taken at Naledi. And what's interesting to me is that the sky is changing. There seems to be some nice colors coming out. That often happens in the change of season. So as the sun starts to set, or those of you that catch the sunrise, keep a lookout because the pictures are really quite incredible. Those of you that have been to the bush, lucky enough to have been to the bush, it does make you want to get there <laughs> when you look at these sunrises and sunsets. Let's have a look at one more. This time taken from Pan. Just look at those colors. Jenny Nelson, you nailed it. Look at that beautiful cloud in the top right. The silhouette of the tree, I would say that's a framer. <laughs> Just incredible colors. Oh, 
Okay, right, let's have a look and see what's happening. Let's go across to Tau. I'd like to have a look on the main, on the live cameras before we get to the end of the show. Remember, folks, if you have any questions, keep them coming. It's always nice to engage with you, the viewer. But here we have a beautiful waterbuck talking about the waterbuck pictures. This is live now at Tau. Beautiful big male. <laughs> Taking in some shade. Talking about the fact that winter is slowly coming. But it's still not exactly a northern hemisphere winter. So the middays at the moment are probably somewhere around maybe 30. Gone down from... 38 or so to maybe 30, so this waterbuck enjoying a bit of shadow here. Lovely view close up to the camera. Let's go across to Tembi as well while this um, waterbuck is having a nibble there. There's some beautiful Inyala Tembi. Lots of bird calls. It's quite interesting to see how it has gone really quite a lot drier. It's quite nice. to understand that the, the weather is changing and to be a bit more aware of, of the, the activity that we might start to see around the water holes. As things dry out, obviously the animals want to spend more and more time at the water holes. Okay, while these Inyalas are having a little nibble, I just want to go to one or two more highlights things you might have missed there's a great little clip here again staying with the, uh, the birding theme there's two hornbills at Naledi one having a nibble on the left hand side and the other one having a sandbar <laughs> we've often seen hornbills scratching around the big piles of elephant droppings so here it's a bit of a combination coming for a clean there comes number three. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice it must be a good bird bath a dust bath there <laughs> the others can come in for a feed around <laughs> that dropping and again it's really nice to be able to observe this sort of behavior without disturbing the birds this is quite common for birds to do to get that sand in between the feathers and get rid of ectoparasites. It acts as an abrasive. Always quite an interesting track to look at, those divots that they create. Now they're friends again. Uh, back to feeding. <laughs> Very comical birds. Let's have a look. I just want to go back to Tembi one more time, the live cameras. There was a waterbuck that just got chased out of the bush. I'm not sure if those lines are still around, but it's definitely worthwhile having a look. Thanks for that, Hornbills. <laughs> so the waterbuck just came dashing out from the left-hand side behind that termite mound. Let's see if we can get the zoomies to zoom out just a bit just in case the lines are around like i said they've been spending a fair amount of time here at tembi they have had full stomachs, so they they have been successful but you know lions will often on average try and hunt every two days it obviously depends on on what they've killed you know if one lioness kills a buffalo she'll be feeding there for four or five days but but if there's big pride around tembi catches and Impala or Nyala, they'll be done with that and be ready to hunt again. Looks, looks like those Impalas and Nyalas are quite relaxed. 
So maybe that Waterbuck just got a, a fright of some kind. I'm not so clear what it was. I just caught the last bit of movement, but it's always worthwhile having a look. Marcel, you asked the question here, what's my favorite private reserve in South Africa? Ooh, tough question, very tough question. But seeing as we here at Tembi, just south of Tembi is Pinda. I think that's where we've been. Um, it's a beautiful reserve. It's quite an unusual area, this whole area, that Tembi and the surrounding parts. So that's definitely right up there. But I must say, at this point, I'll go to any bit of bush there. <laughs> As long as it's wild, I'm ready to go. But um, there are lots of different beautiful places, as I'm sure you'll agree. Be interested to know what your favorite reserve is, as I know you've done some fair traveling. Let's finish off at Taupan. I think there were some elephants there. If I don't get to your question or your answer, sorry, Marcel, this time, I'd still be quite interested to know what you think is the nicest reserve for you. And for that matter, anybody else that's traveled in South Africa, it's always nice to know your thoughts. So at Tembi, of course, here's a farewell to the show. Those elephants at Rosie's at the introduction, they didn't stick around. But this has also been very active pan lately as things dry out. Lots of wonderful elephant sightings, certainly not short of good elephant viewing on many of our cameras. Folks, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you again so much for joining me. Thanks for all your questions and your involvement. It's always nice to be with you for this time. Again, I can only encourage you whenever you have the time to keep watching the cameras, look out at Tembi, maybe those lions come back, look out for the mating pair of leopards at Rosie's. And I wish you a wonderful Easter weekend. Whatever you get it up to, enjoy it. Keep watching the cameras and we'll catch up with you next week. Have a great day further, folks.